Ambitronic. Listen to the difference. Okay, so I'm Stephen Method. But going back. So, all right. Before I talk a little bit about myself and introduce myself, I just want to remind people that being inclusive benefits everyone. So that is people who require the use of a wheelchair, wheelchair users, people with a mobility impairment, people with a hearing impairment, which is this is specifically about, people with a hidden disability, think autism, anxiety, families, families benefit from good accessibility, elderly people, we live in an aging population. People with a temporary injury are recovering from a medical procedure. Expecting mothers who have a bundle of joy on the way. Now, looking at this entire row of people, at some point in your life, you will be one of the people who will benefit from accessibility. Now, those with a hearing impairment actually represent the largest proportion of disabled people globally. Here in the UK, one in 10 people roughly have some form of hearing loss. Now, over to me. So I've introduced direct access, uh, but this isn't about direct access. This is about me as a person and talking about some of the barriers that I face personally. So I was born profoundly deaf, I'm 46 years old, so that was 46 years ago. And all my life, I have worn hearing aids. John, I must say that that chart that you shared was frighteningly accurate. Because I have a 90 decibel hearing loss, I can own not really, I can't even hear an aeroplane, jumbo jet, fly over my head without a hearing aid. So, when I was growing up, I had a big box on my chest. Then I progressed to NHS, uh, back behind the ear hearing aids. And then I had a large cochlear implant. And now on the far right side, I now wear a magnetic smaller implant. So when it comes to hearing loss, uh, I, I know it all. I can provide that first-hand experiment. One of the biggest problems somebody who wears hearing aids faces is background noise. Because as John mentioned, the hearing aids have 360 degrees. We amplify every single thing and not necessarily what we're specifically trying to listen to. To put these barriers into perspective and to provide a clear picture and hopefully a greater understanding at the end of this presentation, this is Crew Station. This is my local station. So, I've already potentially incurred barrier number one. The taxi that I arrived here on didn't have an induction loop, so I couldn't hear the driver when he was asking me where I wanted to be dropped off. Or perhaps I arrived in my car with my family and were going away for the day. There's a problem with the ticket machine. So I press the help button, but I can't hear the audio because there's so much background noise going on. I can hear the car radiator. I can hear my kids arguing in the back of the car about who's going to go first on the train. So I can't use this facility because there's no induction loop. Then we arrive. Then I have to take a lift. The lift didn't work out. Now, not all these barriers would be present on every trip. Heaven hope, uh, 
but the chances are maybe one of them will. And if I faced one barrier during my journey, my day is tainted. So maybe the lift isn't working, so we have to ask for a system. I can't hear because there's no induction loop. I need to buy the ticket. So the problem with the machine, the machine isn't letting the paper come out. I can't find somebody to help me. So I have to use the phone system on them. But then I can't hear because there are children crying in the background. The entrance door, the opening and shutting, the people shutting, the tannoy. So I can't actually hear the machine. I go to the barriers. So maybe there's um, a problem with the barrier machine. So then what do I do? My ticket, the barrier is not accepting my ticket. So I then go to the help point. I press the assistant button. I can't hear it because there's too much going on. And my hearing aids are amplifying every single thing in that space. Maybe um, I'm fed up with the machines and trying to use an intercom and things like that. So I'll go to an information booth to speak to someone. But I can't lip read the person because they're the prospect screen with glare. So I need to be able to hear the person. I can't do that either because there's no induction loop in place. Here, we have induction loop, but if you look carefully, the signs appear in off. On the right hand side, there is actually a loop, but there's no sign, so I don't know that there is a loop. Over time, if we don't have the right management in place, the microphone gets put under the deck, the system gets disconnected. Maybe they change the deck and they forget to put the loop back. Maybe they redecorate it and they temporarily moved the loop, installed it, but didn't commission it correctly. Uh, do you know what? I really struggled this morning trying to catch my train with these barriers. So I'm going to treat myself in the first class lounge. Ah, to enter the doors to get the coffee and the muffins and the diet pokes and all the, the treats and the leather chairs, I have to speak on an intercom. I can't hear on the intercom. Here is the calm corner, which is the first designated quiet room on uh, the UK rail network. There's no induction loop in here. So I, do, I can't relax in here. I'm going to buy a coffee. I can't hear because the people in the queue are chatting. The coffee machine, the steam in the milk, that predominantly takes all my sound hearing ability. And the person in front of me cannot be heard at all. Here is something that really does make me angry and I'm really having to restrain myself and not use stronger language. But in most stations throughout the UK, um, in order to hear a Hanoi announcement, I have to stand next to a blue box in order to be able to hear it. Come on. Uh, I'm with my family, maybe I'm with my wife, maybe I'm with some friends. Do I really want to leave that group of people to stand next to a blue box? Maybe I'm on my own in the waiting room and I'm sitting down. I can't relax because I can't hear any tannoy announcement. I have to constantly keep looking at the screen. It's not an enjoyable experience for me. I'm going to grab a newspaper on the way. Uh, there's no induction loop. Guess what? 
and by the platform. The screens are not working. So how am I going to know uh, what time my journey is if my train's been delayed? I then have to go and speak to someone where there's a lot of background noise. But the great news, and this is fantastic news, the telephones, which have not been in use for 10 years, they have an induction loop, which is brilliant. It's not really, but yeah. So if you look at there, when people think about accessibility, they think about wheelchair users, they think about people with impaired vision. But those with a hearing impairment, and I'll remind you, the largest proportion of disabled people, they face barriers every single day in public transport. And, and I would like to thank you for your time, and I will ask, answer any questions at the end of this session. Thank you so much. Amplitronic. Listen to the difference.